Okay, welcome to my very first watercolor tutorial. A lot of you have been asking for this and I recently got a commission to do a hedgehog with a teddy bear. Um, and this is my first version of it and I didn't really like how the colors turned out. I thought it looked really dull and boring. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you how I do my watercolors. So the first thing that I do is I do a rough sketch in pencil. Um, I always find it easier to have a light sketch underneath before I start painting with the watercolor because watercolor is just gets everywhere. So if you make a mistake with watercolor, it's really hard to go back on it. Um, so I always do a sketch, try to keep it light, but I sometimes I have a heavy hand as you can probably see. But I like having a sketch just to know where my barriers are for the color to go down. And if you'd like to practice watercolor alongside me, I'll leave a link to the line art in the description below so you can actually print that off onto watercolor paper um, and then paint right on top of that. And you can see now I'm going over the, the sketchy lines with some more confident strokes and this just helps clarify what the actual shapes are going to be. And um, I'm also using reference photos for these, at least for the hedgehog. I kind of know what a teddy bear looks like. But always use reference photos taking from Google. I love Pinterest for reference photos. Um, sometimes I'll take pictures of items I have around the house or when I'm drawing human characters, I'll even pose in the positions and old stuffed animals or objects or whatever I might need. Don't just try to go in and and think that you have you know what a hedgehog looks like, go on to um, Google and find those reference photos. Okay, so I am happy with the drawing and so now it's time to go in with the actual watercolor. The first thing that you always want to do is put down a base watercolor. So that means filling up the whole space with water and then loading up on your paintbrush with a little bit of color and painting the entire object. So I've decided to go with the hedgehog first and that really helps to just separate things. So I've uh, put this pinkish color on the hedgehog because I decided um, after I did that kind of boring painting that I really wanted to have more separation of the colors and, and have more unity. And so I decided that I wanted to have a pink hedgehog and a yellow teddy bear. Um, and that's another point I would say is that your objects don't necessarily have to be the colors that uh, you think of. So the hedgehog doesn't have to be brown and white. And the teddy bear doesn't have to be brown either. You can definitely take artistic liberty. As long as the highlights and the shadows are correct and the shapes are correct, then it will come out well. So I waited till the base color was dry and now I'm putting in all the little quills and this is really fun for me because you can really see the watercolor going to work. Because I would say that the water does most of the heavy lifting and then it's just dependent on how much paint, how much pigment you put in there. As I put more water down, the paint kind of bleeds into each other and sometimes I will even lift the page like that uh, because I want more pigment to go in a certain direction um, and you even see now how the I put on almost a darker color and I want those two colors to bleed in I don't want there to be that big of a separation I'm putting, trying to put more pigment in those areas that have washed out a little bit. And that's something that I can address later as well as, as it dries. When it's drier, it'll be lighter anyway, and so I can paint right on top of that. It's a good problem to have when, it's, when the paint is too washed out. It's not very good if you paint too dark and you're trying to lighten it up because once you put the paint down, you can't really go lighter, you can only go darker. And then I put down some shade on the face 
and you're really trying to figure out where the light source is at this stage and the light source for this one is coming from above and so I'm trying to keep the the forehead and on top of the nose the lightest part of the hedgehog And you can kind of tell with the teddy bear I'm doing the same thing. I'm thinking about the light coming from above and so putting in the shadow and in this case it's just a darker yellow, more pigmented yellow um, in the places where there might be a shadow. Um, I went over with some of the quills of the hedgehog at the front because they didn't seem as even. They seemed too light compared to the to the rest of them. They kind of all molded together and I like how the rest of the quills have a little bit more shape to them. And then I add a little bit of more shadow to the hedgehog. And now I'm going in with more shadow for the teddy bear. And this is more of an orangey color. Uh, with shadows, it doesn't have to be just a darker version of the, the base color that you're using, so it doesn't have to be just the dark yellow. Um, I could have used blue for the shade, but I didn't think it would look very cohesive, so I chose the orange for that. And you see now I'm adding a little bit of yellow to the top of the hedgehog's face because I wanted a little bit, just even more warmth to the light on the face. Um, and here I am. I didn't. I don't think this was a good idea for me to do. I was trying to put the yellow into the quills, and I felt like I just uh, blended everything together. And I really liked how I had the separation before. So I've decided at this point to just let that area dry real quick and I'll go back over with the quills and I'll work on something else. So now I'm working on the shadow, the hedgehog and teddy bear are casting and uh, a shadow gets darker the closer it is to the uh, object that's casting the shadow. When you lift your paintbrush, that's where all of the pigment finally disperses. So that's where it's going to be the darkest. I get a little bit strategic about where I'm putting my brush down and lifting it um, because I know when I lift it that it's going to be way darker. And so that's just something to keep in mind as you are painting. So then I left that to dry and I came back a little bit later to redo the quills that I kind of blended together with the yellow. Um, and I definitely wish I hadn't done the, the yellow on there because it blended everything together. but. Um, you learn from your mistakes and you just try to solve the problem as you go on and, and actually I really like how it ended up turning out because it looks like there's even more quills on the hedgehog than there were before. Watercolor is really just about layering sheets of paint on top of each other so that's why you start off light and you start off with one color and so that's why I always like to keep it in the same kind of general sphere of colors. Layering yellow on top of a pink, purple on top of pink. Um, just keeping it in the same kind of color family. I also want this hedgehog to have a cute little cheeks and a blush. And so putting in that, those pink cheeks at the end as well. Okay, now I have decided that the, I don't like the pencil. See, I, I draw really heavily with the pencil, and then you see these gray lines, and so I decided that I wanted to keep the outline, but um, because I can't erase it at this point because there's paint on top of the pencil, 
And so I decided to take a thinner brush and load it up with a lot of pigment, that pink color, and outline hedgehog. And I think I do a pink outline over the teddy bear as well. And so now I've, I'm outlining the teddy bear, and I think I've actually chosen more of an orangey color. I'm mixing orange and pink together. And that's because just a yellow would probably not be dark enough for the type of line work that I'm doing. So choosing the orange with a little bit of red just kind of helps darken those lines a little bit and keep it kind of cohesive with the hedgehog because the hedgehog has a lot of pink in it. Oh, and here I am putting in a little purple heart because I thought it would be a cute addition. So these are the kind of things that are going through my head as I'm painting, but obviously this is the second time that I've painted this. The first time that I painted it, it turned out way too muddy and not cute and warm like I wanted because in my head I was like, okay, let's do a, a yellow hedgehog and then we'll make his quills blue and we'll make the teddy bear pink and a blue bow and there was just too much going on and so I decided after doing that one that I really needed to just settle on pink hedgehog, yellow bear and uh, I think it helped a lot just by limiting the color palette. Um, so that would be a, another piece of advice, especially when you're beginning, is just to choose a couple base colors at the beginning and then uh, going off of that. There's so many things to talk about when it comes to watercolor, but I hope that gives you at least a little bit of an idea of what I do when I do watercolor. Um, and if you use these tips and you're painting along with me, please send me your paintings because I really like seeing what you guys come up with. Um, and let me know if something didn't make sense, if you want me to elaborate on a certain thing I talked about even more. Happy painting and I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video.